can still stand in the midst of the problems you can still stand understand it first chronicles 12 32 when the tribes were being put together to support david he says of the sons of issachar who had understanding of times they had what understanding of time they had what understanding of time to to know what Israel ought to do they were their chiefs were 200 and all their brothers were their uh, at their command to know what Israel ought to do when you have understanding you don't just have the knowledge but you know what to do the most annoying thing about life is somebody who knows everything but doesn't know what to do they can speak to you about their vision their mission that is not even annoying it's when they can speak christian jargons we are speaking to the brother how are you oh blessed thou eth in the name of jesus hallelujah eth. to your name we praise eth. he knows everything about scripture but they don't have understanding what to do at what particular time so to go and look for a job they are in their rooms and they are shabai shabba kabaya shabba kabaya listen you got to have some understanding if you need a job you need a resume something called re, re what resume and when you take the resume you don't just put it on your neck you have to present it to a job who's willing to employ you are you what i'm saying you ought to know what to do listen do you know now let me tell you this do you know that there are people who are who have high school education who are on a six-figure salary and there are some who have doctorate degrees who are being paid about twelve thousand a year because some people know what to do oh you didn't hear what i said oh yeah some people know oh yeah but i don't want to inflate my uh resume they didn't inflate their resume they told the world what they can do oh you didn't hear what i said they told the world what they can do i read some resumes i'm like these guys are smart so it says education it says high school education experience i looked after directors um the last managing director was taking advice from me um was taking advice yeah at break he used to come to me and ask for advice oh you didn't hear what i said yeah oh yeah they know what they ought to do yeah says so, okay i'm a psw okay have you had the, do you have experience yes right from india i was looking for three old ladies in the house oh they know what they ought to do they want to tell you that their experience count sometimes we, 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 we play it in, in the name of Christianity and that's no Christianity sell yourself who are you made when we come here we are able to shout we are more than a conqueror what did you conquer but then go and look for a job so be here for me I don't want to say things that uh, you know people will think that because you don't have understanding the system is made in such a way that if you don't sell yourself nobody will sell you how do you know that I'm the best preacher in Canada because I tell you every Sunday and so when people ask you out there do you know a great past, uh, preacher after you mention T.D. Jakes and you mention my bishop, say Pastor Albert. Ah, that. That's me. And the interesting thing is that sometimes the people in those positions are no better than you. And you get angry. Hey, this person, I don't even know how they got this position because they so they have understanding. start your business oh I'm waiting for money you don't have understanding you don't did you have money before they gave you a credit card they realize you don't have money that's why they gave you a credit card understand
understanding. Most of the billionaires you know owe a lot. Most of the billionaires you know owe a lot. You know, they said the, 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 the more you are in debt, the more they're going to support you. So if you can be in debt more, they will support you more. And you owe credit card $200. And you are so stressed that you have to visit your doctor every week. I don't think this is me, so I'm going to use somebody's experience. If you think it's me, it's up to you. One of those credit card companies called that my friend. You let me finish my story and I'll tell you which one. Those credit card companies call my friend. It says, um, you have not paid your monthly uh, something. And then my friend asks the person this question. Do you yourself, do you have a credit card? <laughs> I think the person was so shocked. He's asking, but I'm here to ask you this question. <laughs> Oh, well, I was checking. Maybe it's an oversight. I said, Now you are talking. The same way you have oversight, I also have oversight. Can we talk later? I'm busy. That's what my friend said, you know, like. Because you know, this book can be tormenting sometimes. <laughs> but after having knowledge, you need understanding. Understanding, you got to understand how the system works. Every system you are in, you have to know how that system works. There are people who are in Canada who are never having problems, but they understand the system. And there's some of us here who don't understand the system, we are struggling without understanding, and we keep shouting common sense. Let me tell you one danger of limited understanding. Proverbs 16 25. It says, There is a way that seems right, but the end is the way of death. You may have all the knowledge, but you need some understanding. One of the things I learned in Canada was that you can drive on ice, icy roads, uh, no, uh, icy rivers. Anybody been on them before? Yeah. The Africans in the house say they won't try because they are from Africa. <laughs> My great grandfathers are from Africa, but I try those things. Driving on icy rivers are the shortest possible cut to places when the winter is so bad and the roads cannot be moved. I mean, like the, the, the 18 wheelers driving on rivers because it's so solid that you can drive on it. Okay. Some of us don't even swim during summer. Because of understanding. There is a great I, I watched all these do documentaries just to get things to come and tell you because my jokes are getting finished. About the wild catch where the they catch um crabs in the Arctic Sea. Anybody watch those ones? Those crabs and it, it, it's life and death. You know, uh, the last one I watched, a whole ship sank. And they're explaining that it's frigid, cold temperature water. So when you get in, your, your, your heart can shut down within about seven minutes or so. And you see them walking around uh, this thing like nothing is happening, catching fish, uh, catching crabs with fish, big time fish. Now these crabs are like that. And one of them costs, I think, something. Sometimes when they finish, they've made about $700,000 for that maybe four days or five days that they caught crab. When they finish, they sh you have a share of whatever profit they made. 
sometimes you get 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 dollars an individual because you were on the boat. I'm speaking to you about understanding. I understand where I came from. So if you offer me 500,000 to be on that ship, I won't do it. I won't go. You see, with your knowledge, you should have also what? Understanding will take you to the next level of your life. You got to understand what is going on. When you understand, you know what you ought to do. This is what knowledge does. Knowledge will tell you to get up in the morning and go for a walk. Understanding will tell you that today don't go out. Why? You feel your heart is palpitating. You feel something is wrong with your body. Understanding will tell you, you know it's good to walk. But you understand your body as well. It's not just common sense. It's not just what you know. It's understanding as well. So now let's talk about the word wisdom. And let it go home. And I'll continue this. I'm giving you the basics. Wisdom sees the big picture. What does wisdom do? It can connect each part and relate it to the whole picture. Wisdom is different from knowledge. The fact that you have knowledge doesn't mean you are wise. You can have knowledge without wisdom. Like a brilliant fool. There are some people who can do all the math, all the science, whatever. But you know, you hear people say the person has not got home sense. But you cannot have wisdom without knowledge. And so when you are being trained, you know, you have to go to school. This is a blot in my history, so I keep saying it over and over again. When I was in grade 10, we were told that Jesus is coming, so we shouldn't go to school. So most of us stayed home because Jesus was coming. I don't know whether it's common sense that we didn't have so that we can acquire knowledge because I think we're very far away. Because you need knowledge wherever you are in life. I told you that I was offered a job as a PSW in England. And they ask me, do you have any experience? What do you think I told them? Of course, because I look after my grandmother and all those people, I look after them. And they asked me some questions, technical questions, which I thought they were just bulldozing me because I was black. They didn't take me for the job anyway. That was wrong because I looked after my grandmother. But I started reading a little bit about gerontry and I realized that I knew nothing about old people. I didn't. I thought my grandmother, the, my grandmother's sister, who was living with us, was a witch. Because she had Alzheimer's. And so all of us called her a witch. Because we will feed her and my father will come from work and say, have you eaten? He says, hmm. This woman is a witch. <laughs> she just ate. <laughs> She's trying to get us into trouble. We had no knowledge. If we had that knowledge, why would we find this poor old lady? I remember when she was sleeping. No Alzheimer's and its effects. When she's sleeping, wake her up, come and eat, and before you go and tell my father that you didn't eat. So when she's eating, we ask her, Are you eating? She says, Yes. Are you eating? She says, Yes. <laughs> and then my father will come home. Hey, 
have you eaten? Like, oh boy, who brought this witch? Of course, that was abuse. Because the woman did not know she was lost. When you, ha you don't have knowledge, there are so many things that can happen to you. The Bible categorically said, we perish because we don't have knowledge. And sometimes we jump knowledge and then try to have wisdom. It doesn't work. <laughs> As a matter of fact, those people who have knowledge stay back a little bit from some things. Those who have knowledge run from things like being a pastor. It's a great thing. It's one of the great things you can do. I can tell you I'm a pastor. But those who have knowledge look at the thing. And they start going back. Say, do you want to be a pastor? I say, who? Say, you. Say, okay. May the Lord <laughs> forbid. Sister told me. I want to ask him. I want to start a church. So I want to speak to you. So give me some advice. He told me plainly, only fools will start churches. You have so many churches. I said, this guy, what's wrong with him? He doesn't even see, he sees the call. He's jealous of me, eh? <laughs> and when I started church and I started having issues, I used to go to as an old man. And I said, well, I'm having issues. He said, I told you. Hold you only crazy people but this is what you do this is what you do next he was such a helpful man he will give me places to meet we won't want to have an all night too. he has some big buildings some places and he will send us there free of charge go I have to keep praying keep waiting upon God he supported me but I didn't have knowledge of what I was entering into you cannot bypass knowledge to get wisdom Knowledge can be informal or formal. You can go to school to learn. Or uh, in, in the olden times, it was transferred from mother to daughter, from father to son. That's how they did it. They gave you information. You learned. You had information. You knew how to become a hunter. And some of you know that I've, I've become a hunter before in my life. I was a hunter. When my father sleeps, I'll go and take his gun and I'll go to the bush. Because my uncle was a hunter. He used to bring home some game like deer. You know, like it was so. I remember one of the deers I still remember. Like beautiful, reddish. And it was still breathing hard. I'm like, wow. So my uncle killed this. And so I also want to kill something. So when my parents are asleep, I'll take the gun and walk to the bush. With no light. <laughs> I was not daring just when I was a kid. Uh, when I grew up. I've been like that since I was a child. Knowledge. Guess how many animals I brought home. <laughs> None minus zero. <laughs> Effort. 100%. Results. And that is it when we don't have knowledge. Whatever subject you want to operate in, you have to start learning. Start learning about it. If you want to be a seamstress, learn about it. And you know, one of the things that is annoying, every subject you do or you study, anything you study at school, they take you around the block. Maybe you, you want to be a seamstress, they say that you're going to do math. Math for what? I just want to show. What? Why should I calculate? I'm a seamstress. Why? Or nurses, nurses. You are doing nursing. They say you need math. What, what do I need? I just need a pow, 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 pow. That's it. But you have to do math. Calculate the amount of injection over some stuff. It's like it doesn't. I'm running away from math. That's why I'm doing this subject. Why would. Oh, come on. Why math? Why? 
or maybe you love science you love the calculations you don't want to read history books and they tell you to read history like come on i hated reading that is why i'm doing science why do you bring me here because they want to give you knowledge and so those who have studied whether by apprenticeship or by oral tradition or by going to school you realize they are around it give you an example when I'm sick and I go to the hospital here although I shouldn't most of the time I put my life in the hands of the nurse or doctor because I know they will, they will inject me with a clean needle it's my assumption you see I assume that because I know they are knowledgeable but when I go to some places when you are taking the needle out of the the um, the package I want to see whether there's no hole around that you use it for the previous person before you are using it on me you realize when you go to hospitals here you see them throw the needle into the um, what is that they call that thing chapel they call sharp container I, I knew that sharp container <laughs> they put it you see it yourself you build confidence that somebody knows what they are doing. You understand? You don't get scared. Because I'm telling you, by experience, I went to a certain clinic. And when I was there, they were, you know, uh, injecting people. They would call nests, and the nest would clean the thing with a lint. Nest. So, as I was sitting up, okay, I still had hope that once they see me, they will change the needle. So when she called me next, I looked back. I asked, who? Me? Says, yes, you. Then I looked back again. I said, I'm not taking the needle. <laughs> Says, why? I said, but you just gave somebody a shot. He started raining insults. She started raining insults on me. You think you know everything? You think you know everything? I was having malaria, so I was going for the shot. I got up. I said, AIDS and malaria. I will take my malaria. AIDS and malaria. Because I have some knowledge. That was my song. You see? AIDS and malaria. I will take my malaria. AIDS and malaria. I went home. I went home. And I'm still alive. in those days they didn't have any retro drugs for AIDS or whatever my bones would have been white by now you need listen you need knowledge everywhere you are you got to learn whether you are in church whether you are at work listen that is why they have all these courses for you to learn and become better when you are at the workplace new knowledge is coming new understanding is coming they are teaching you new things don't say well as for me i knew this long time ago you know you knew it but there are new um discoveries new better ways of doing things and you have to acquire more knowledge because without the knowledge wisdom will not operate is somebody listening to me Wisdom will operate only when knowledge is available. When you multiply zero by zero, what do you get? When you add zero to zero, what do you get? Okay. Now watch this. God has a way of making your zero ten. When it comes to wisdom, it's a gift that God gives to you. So what he does is that he's using your common sense with your knowledge added to your understanding to make sure you have the bigger picture. Are you beginning to understand? There are layers there. Don't, don't just pray, God grant me wisdom when you know you have no knowledge. Maybe I'll ask the most difficult question. What was the last time you picked up a book and read? Oh, but pastor, why do I need to, to read? Maybe you are working in a factory. Safety in factory places. There are books out there. You'll be surprised at the things I read. 
I read so that I can t- preach to you. I'm not a lawyer. I read things. Uh, 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 law journals, I read. I read journal of uh, medicine. That was the psychology I just quoted. I just want to have some little knowledge. Because the world is so vast. And there are so many things you don't know. May the Lord help you to acquire knowledge so that he can grant you wisdom. Look in scripture. Anybody that was given wisdom already had knowledge. Daniel. He has studied Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They have studied. And I'm not saying it's only formal school. It can be informal. Homeschooling is still schooling. Being taught by your parents is still schooling. In the mouth of wisdom, as we cry to God for wisdom, I'm asking that your knowledge base will be strong. I was reading something about women's hair. And I I didn't read the science behind it, so this is not a scientific thing. But this was just an article about the fact that that there is a um, there's an observation I hear people say uh, I research 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 is beyond just what somebody has just observed okay so when somebody comes and tell you I have researched something ask them their sources and how they did the experiment in which confinements they did those experiments but they were talking about the relation uh, between fibroids and chemicals for women's hair and I think that's why I lost my hair the things I put in my hair why is everybody saying A I have nothing you have the knowledge That's why you still have your hair. <laughs> and for lack of knowledge, I lost my hair. May the Lord help us. Proverbs 4 6. Don't forsake wisdom. She'll protect you. When you have wisdom, it will protect you. Love her, she'll watch over you. Wisdom will keep you safe. The beginning of wisdom is this get wisdom. What is the beginning of wisdom? Do it at all costs. And then when you have wisdom also, please make sure you have understanding. See, the Bible didn't say anything about common sense because it's it's just the framework on which you can build your knowledge, can build your understanding, and build wisdom as well. Proverbs 3.13 says, Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. Pastor, how do I get wisdom? Number one, wisdom starts with fearing of the Lord. Proverbs 9, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Fearing God is basically this. You recognize that he's the creator. He's your master. He's, he rules over your life. He's holy. He's awesome. He calls the shots. And in response, you willingly submit to him. Secondly, Wisdom grows by receiving God's word. You see, I told you that you need knowledge to have wisdom. There is no knowledge which is above the knowledge of the word. Number three, wisdom requires that we ask for it specifically. You see, when it comes to wisdom, you cannot study to have wisdom. James 1.5 says, now if anyone lacks wisdom, he should ask God. What do you do? You ask, it's a gift. You ask God, God grant me wisdom. You don't study then you become wise. No. Let me tell you this story now. Get out of your way. A small store owner was being pressured to sell his uh, little shop. A big supermarket had come to buy all uh, the plaza left and right a strip mall huge one 
they bought everybody out and he was in the middle and he's refusing to go and they are trying to buy him out and says i'm not moving an inch they're like if we start your store is not going to be you know anything significant anyway because you know when big stores come to an area they kill the small stores they price themselves they price them out and when they move out they they they, 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 they put up their prices again and so they they seen this guy was so stubborn you know they, they they decided to start their their store anyway on the left and on the right so what they did was that they put on a big banner like huge you know those banners huge banners and say grand opening with the balloons everything so this small shop owner sat down and thought how do i even survive in the midst of this say god give me wisdom so he also went and made a small uh, no, no, uh, banner and put it on top of his store main entrance <laughs> main entrance <laughs> so they have the grand opening but where is the main entrance may the lord grant us wisdom somebody would have taken them to court they have put a banner on there you go in the night and cut it you will fight them no he had some understanding free advertisement grand opening and he says what may god grant you the main thing for wisdom is the principal thing may you become the main entrance that your enemies never thought of may god open your mind and understanding no one there's a bigger way out and make a way for you where there is no way may he make your enemies be surprised about what he's doing in your life you become the main person when you have wisdom you become the main entrance when you have wisdom you become the main one to watch when it comes to wisdom wisdom is the principal thing it's the main thing let them open their stalls around you let them say whatever they like at the end of the day you are the main one because wisdom is the principal thing god bless you and have a fantastic week hallelujah hallelujah amen and amen well i thank you cyber church for watching it's been such a journey with you this year we thank you for support your prayer and everything that you do for fruitful house so that the gospel will reach so many people i want you to understand this that we don't take for granted all your support especially your financial support and for those who are listening to me for the first time you want to support us you can support us through uh, sending an interact uh, interact to all accounts at fruitfulhouse.com accounts at fruitfulhouse.com if you're in canada if you're not in canada go to our website and go to paypal and you can support us as well god bless you shalom have a beautiful week amen hallelujah amen and amen i thank god that we have done the foundation of wisdom did you enjoy the foundation we're gonna jump into some gears next week coming amen because now we understand what wisdom is and what wisdom is not we're going to have fun with this wisdom subject amen and tuesday i told you who was here on tuesday how did you like tuesday oh my god we started wisdom and we reached a point where we asked the question wisdom was a is a woman it's a she and why you know so we're going to continue on tuesday it's going to be amazing amen yeah the bible never called wisdom he in the bible it was always she hmm. women you got something you got something we're going to have the lord's uh, lord's supper communion we'll come to the lord's table last week it was memorial services and so we couldn't do it blessed assurance 
Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory.